Hey there everybody and welcome back. For those of you that have been looking into more about AppGyver formulas to see how you could use them to maybe save you some time or use some of the more advanced features AppGyver has to offer, stay tuned, I'm gonna be covering the basics in this video. Now, for those of you that are unfamiliar with AppGyver, it's a platform to create mobile applications for free, as long as you're an indie developer or, or if I'm not mistaken, a company that makes 10 million in revenue or less, you can check the details of that on their pricing page. But if you check out my channel, I have tons of other resources and information of videos and content related to this platform and other codeless development builders. So don't forget to like, subscribe, and continue to check out the channel for new content. Now, we're gonna go ahead and get started. This is gonna be a really basic example, but we'll cover really what you need to know to get started with formulas. So, if we are in AppGyver, I have a sample application, and basically we have sample message. So we have a title, we have the input box, a divider, and then just a general text box here. So if we go to sample message, we want to add a variable or something that we can reference with this formula. So we'll use a page variable and we'll click add page variable and then we will name this, we'll just call it sample and we'll click save. Now we have something to reference with our formula, although you don't need to have variables, you can use formulas for other reasons, but we'll click on this and for the value, we can actually just choose the sample page variable that we just created and click save. And then down here, we'll do the same thing. And I'll show you why this content is already essentially the formula, because I was testing this earlier. But we've chosen the value. So maybe we decided, you know what, I actually want to type this out as a formula instead. You can go back to select binding type, click on formula, and you'll see it automatically populates the formula for that page variable, which is page vars.sample. So the idea here is that's the only page variable that we have. But this is essentially the interface for the formulas option or section. So you'll see over here on the left hand side, you have tons of formulas to work with. So if we just wanted to check the page parameters, you'll see we don't have any. But if we went and created one, they would populate here. Now, if we want to pull this page variable, we would just double click here. It'll auto populate in the text box. We can click save. And then we can go down here and you'll see the content page vars dot sample. So we can verify that is also correct. And we'll just click Save. Now I have the preview for this application over here. So you'll see it has sample message, so I'll type in hello. And you'll see it automatically adds the text down here because as I'm typing, this is a test. It's saving the page variable as this is a test. So that's really the basics. Now, if you wanna learn more about formulas and see really how you can use them, if you go through on the left hand side, the top ones are more just app data and page parameters. So app variables, data variables, page parameters, page variables. But then you get into some of the more complex options. So this is where it basically goes from no code to low code. So you'll see you can reference theme variables, translation variables, variable and resource schemas, but you also have functions. So one that I think most people would probably be interested in learning would be date formulas. So you'll see if we scroll down, if you click on one, over on the right hand side is the documentation that gives you a walkthrough, but also gives you an example. So if you wanted to use this one, you could copy the example, and then you could paste in the information that matches up with what exactly it is you're looking for. So um, to give you an example, we'll go back to the date, and we'll delete all of this, and we will go with something like Let's see if we can format the date. So if we format the date with local time zone or with time zone, you'll see we could copy all of this and it'll give you a sample value of what it should look like. So if we were to use this format option and you'll see we would basically type this in as it is, it'll show you possible results here. So you could use this format, for example, if you are maybe using data variables and you're wanting to see when users post or when certain content's updated. You can use this variable to effectively clean that up. So the idea is here you're specifying the date and here you're specifying the format. So if you wanted to, you could clear this out. And then if our page variable was a date, for example, so we can go to page variables and put in our sample. 
then you would see that it would basically be setting it up to really just correct this date. So it basically just format it to these guidelines. Now you'll see this requires an inversible formula. So this particular way that we've set this up doesn't necessarily work, but the idea would be, um, obviously you can't encapsulate this in quotation marks, but your content here would be what you could swap out. So um, that would basically be the best way to describe it is if you want, you can enter in your information here and then you would just save it once you've rectified any validation errors here. So that's really all that there is to it. You would pass in the content here to be corrected using this format on the right hand side. And again, it would go for other variables as well. So if you click on schema, you can see anything else that may exist here or the statistical option. You'll see that you can pass in and use these formulas as well. And you can typically pass in the page variables, data variables, etc., in these options as long as you're notating them correctly. Again, just make sure that you're referencing the documentation so you don't run into an error like we just did. But that's effectively all that there is to it. So you're using this text box to reference whatever content you need to. So you can use the formulas to copy and paste information and make it more uh, basically just easy to replicate steps or if you need to use more complicated math or schema or just flow options, or I guess I should say more of the code-based options that allow you to work with the data and use things a little bit more creatively. This adds a whole new level to this platform outside of just dragging and dropping in an image, let's just say, and displaying content. This gives you an ability to work with it in a whole new way. So I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, drop them in the comment box below, and I will see you all in the next video.